Hey friends, welcome to Wednesday's Ask a Flower Farmer. It's your friend, Lisa Mason Ziegler, and as you can see, once again, I am here on the farm. Um, you know, fall weather has always got us hopping, right? And so I'm on the farm today because tomorrow is our normal harvest day. Well, it's gonna be a washout. So I stayed here instead of going to the warehouse and just finished cutting all of these lovelies. Um, you know, fall is a very stressful time for me. We feel like, I feel like we never have enough flowers. And anyway, we have a really awesome co-host coming on with us today. And here she is, I'm gonna ask her in. I've asked one of our instructors, um, who many of you may know, to join us, Val Shermer. And she is dynamite. Hey, Val. Hey, Lisa. You're crooked. Uh-oh, let me do it. How's there that? you are. <laughs> I put up my phone on sideways. Well, that's because Suzanne has trained us to do that, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> let, me, uh, let, me, let me work on this for just one second. So, Val, um, I've known for many years. I actually knew of her, but she and I became really good friends because we were both on the board of the ASCFG, the Association of Specialty Cut Flower Growers. And we actually sat next to each other in the boardroom, you might say. <laughs> and um, anyway, after I attended one of her programs on growing amaryllis and paper whites at one of the conferences, and y'all keep in mind, I've been growing and selling paper whites and amaryllis for decades. I couldn't believe all of the ma amazing tips and tidbits that she had to solve a lot of the problems that we face. So that led us for me to ask Val to do a course with us, which she has done. And so she is here today because I want you guys to get a little tidbit of what this girl has. Um, so Val, thank you so much for joining me here today. How's the weather in Kentucky? It is delightful. Finally, yeah. what about yeah. you? It's very good here. And so friends, everybody knows to ask questions, um, you need to put it in the little bubble down below with the question mark. That means that I don't have to scroll through all the names because I don't want to miss your question. And let's bring our questions today specifically about amaryllis and paper whites. Um, and I'm going to ask Val a few questions to get us started because y'all, there's just so many things that we don't know that what we don't know, right? So Val, I want to just out of the gate because it took me several years to learn this. Um, does bulb size matter? First, I want to say we are talking about amaryllis and paper whites, which are indoor winter blooming bulbs when we force them. So talk to us about why we should buy big or small or what's the best way to go, Val? Absolutely, yes. Bulb size matters. Um, the bigger the bulb, the bigger the show. And um, I like to get bulbs that are, and they're measured by centimeters, uh, but I like to get bulbs that are like about that big around um, because I'll end up getting four or five stems and each stem is going to be loaded with flowers. So the average size of a um, Amaryllis bulb sold in the U.S., actually in the world, is more like that size. And so if you get great big bulbs, you're going to get a great big show. So I always encourage people to get the biggest bulbs you can possibly find. So that's such good advice. So I want to repeat again that if you have questions, please post them in the little bubble with the question mark down below because that's where I'm going to go when we start asking questions. So Val, um, tell so the centimeters um, is how bulbs are sold, you mentioned. And so when we're looking in catalogs, what is the minimum? Let's talk about there's two different kinds. We have amaryllis and we have paper whites. So tell us what the minimum size bulb that you buy um, for in paper whites and amaryllis, just so people kind of look at a catalog and say, whoops, no way am I buying that little bulb. Sure. Um, on paper whites, and they're going to be smaller, uh, but the size paper white that I search far and wide for is 19 centimeters plus. Okay. And that's the largest ones that are 
basically commercially available. But then I'll also, like this year, one of the ones that I wanted to get, I can only get 17 to 18 centimeter size because that's all that was available. And so then I also got that. But you don't want to go down to, like, I don't go below 16 centimeters. Right. Because I don't want, you know, a little bitty bulb the size of a ping pong ball. I want right. a big bulb. And so what about for amaryllis? What is your minimum size for a really great display? And we're going to talk about that in a minute, about yeah. just how you just can't believe the difference in the performance of a small ball versus a big one. So what is your minimum on an amaryllis that you would consider purchasing? Um, 32 centimeters. That okay. is the size that that would be my min. That's the minimum that I will um, purchase unless I'm forced to go smaller. Yeah. And I have been forced to go smaller because say I want a big double white and when they actually dug the bulbs, they weren't that big. And so on occasion, I've had to go down a little bit smaller. But when I go smaller, I have to, I have to put a lot more in the container just to make that big show. All right. So size does matter. Yep. You definitely um, know that. And so the name of Bao's course is Glory, forcing glorious blooms for the holidays and beyond. And what the beyond means, because I'm finding a lot of people are confused by that. What beyond means is after the holidays. We're talking January, February, and March, right, Val? Yep, yep. During those dark days of winter when it seems, and no matter where you live, even if your winters are warm, it's still going to be really gloomy. And if you live someplace cold, it's going to be really miserable and so i love having amaryllis bloom during january february even into march so tell us just a little bit so there are seven questions so i'm going to get to those in just a second um but tell us also do or i have never asked you this before but i do believe you talk i think you may mention it in your course do, have, do you ever cut the amaryllis and paper white stems to use as cut flowers yes yes um, I have cut uh, paper whites if they flop over and I don't like that look, say. I, normally I don't mind the look, but if they flop over, then I'll, I'll cut them. Um, I also had a whole lot blooming one time. And so I cut all of those and I put them in all of my little um, vintage McCoy vases, that beautiful little periwinkle blue, and they looked great. Amaryllis, I will also cut if they get too tall, like yeah. really tall, and they fall over. So then I just cut it right off at the bulb, um, and then I cut it shorter to fit into whatever vase I have. But amaryllis and paper whites both last easily as long as a cut flower as they do on the plant. You know, I found that to be true, too, and I think they're a whole lot easier to actually manage. Um, and so I wanna, I'm going to ask you the first question, but I want to also remind anybody that's ever been a student of any of our online courses, remember to use your little sunflower emoji in here and say, hey, so that all of us can see who you are and you guys can actually connect. So our first question we have is, what is an ideal container for bulb forcing? That's a great question. It can be anything that has a hole in it. Say, look what I happened to bring in with me. Um, this is a clay pot that is a six inch, seven inch clay pot. It is perfect to use for amaryllis. And you can also pack about five to seven paper white bulbs inside this too. So clay pots are perfect because they have a hole in the bottom. So that means that you don't have to worry about your bulbs sitting in water if you right. overwater them. Because if, you, if bulbs sit in water, they will rot. And so having a hole in the bottom eases that. Now, I love these containers that have all this you know, mossy look on them. Yeah. And how you get that is you just leave them outside all summer long. <laughs> And so that is a great container to use. So anything that has a hole, you want it to be heavy enough so that like plastic really doesn't work very well because when the amaryllis start growing, then it can just topple over. If you do put it in plastic, just put that into, slip that inside a bigger pot. 
But one of the pots that I really like that I also show in the course is, if you can see it, oh, back away. Can you see this? Yes, we can see that. It's a pedestal, right? Yeah, it's a pedestal. And so I like things that have, um, you know, a pedestal to it because it just looks really pretty when they're blooming. Um, these were the ones that I forced last winter. And so this is the stage they're in now. And then this doesn't have a hole in it. And almost all of the containers that I show in the course don't have holes in them. And that's because it doesn't make a mess on your table or wherever you want to sit it. They're, um, you know, it's really nice and neat uh, to have anywhere in your house. But the only thing is that you don't want to overwater those. So, right. you know, just stick your finger in it. And when it's dry, add a cup of water. So Stephanie has a question. Can the bulbs be saved for the following year if not sold? Planning, and she's planning on getting your course tomorrow. So that must mean um, she's thinking about that if she actually um, makes containers to sell as a mm -hmm. flower farmer mm -hmm. and they don't sell, um, mm -hmm. what do you do? What do you do with the bulbs? You get them to bloom and grow, right? And then what do you do with them? Right. And so I save those, you know, over the winter, the exact same as any home gardener would save them too. So you would have them outside, ideally all summer long in the sun, you would water them, you would fertilize them whenever you happen to fertilize something else. And then they're going to grow all these great big leaves like these that you saw. These have been sitting outside just on the, on the porch all summer long. Um, they can be saved to rebloom the following year. The thing that I would uh, caution Stephanie about is that uh, during the summer, you want these bulbs to get at least as big as they were when you bought them so that they'll have lots of buds inside the bulb, if that makes sense. And say she didn't uh, have a real good summer trying to save them or for whatever reason, they ended up pretty small. You know, they were smaller. They're, they're not going to put in that on that show the second year as they would have the first year. Okay. So, and that's just for amaryllis, right? That doesn't work for paper whites. Right, right. Paper whites, I don't save at all. Yes. If, if you live in a really warm part of the country where they'll perennialize, um, you can put them outside, but it's going to take them a year or two to recover. Right. So I don't, I don't bother with saving them at all. So here's a question that back when we used to sell these at a big Christmas show, uh, we heard it all day long. <laughs> Do you like the smell of paper whites? I like the look, but can't stand the smell. And I know that you do what we did. We seeked out that variety that isn't nearly as stinky as the most common. Isn't it Ziva? Is that the really stinky one? Yes, it's Ziva. So everybody, Z-I-B-A. That is, that's the stinker. <laughs> that's the common one. It is by far the most uh, fragrant. A lot of people find that off-putting to say the yes. least yes. and a lot of people cannot stand it it smells like cat boxes to them it just is terrible yeah so lisa and i've done the same thing we search far and wide and we get the, the bulbs that have the least amount of fragrance and so and that variety for i buy um it's just the name has just left my mind what's the name of the variety near n-i-r or nazareth and we get Nazareth, that's it. Yeah. Nazareth yeah. is the one. Yeah. And both of those have low fragrance, so they still have the fragrance, but they don't make your housemate want to divorce you. Exactly. Exactly. And I've heard the, I've heard it. So here's another one. Okay. I have an amaryllis bulb that have green leaves right now. Do I need to cut back and put in a dark to order to have them bloom again in December? Some bloomed again this summer. They were outside in Vermont. You know, um, talking about them blooming this summer, typically, well, an amaryllis left on its own, where it would be perennial, which is really warm, it's going to bloom in the summer. But what we do, we force it to bloom, you know, for the holidays or right after. But this year, I also had several that bloomed. I would say they're girls, they do what they want to do. And for whatever reason, I had several and I had a couple different varieties that bloomed this summer. I'm not sure how they're going to do this fall, but 
what I'm going to do and what I suggest that she does too is you take that, if you want to try to force them for the holidays, yours are going to be looking like this. Cut off all this foliage. Cut it off, you know, right above the bulb. And even cut off, this one's even got a little baby over here. Cut off that foliage too. Stop watering it. Do not give it any water for the next 10 weeks. Um, so cut it off. Put it someplace dark and ideally a little bit cooler. You know, if you've got like a closet or a basement, uh, put it in there and ignore it. Ignore it for eight to 10 weeks. And she ought to be able to, you know, they'll, they'll start growing once you get them out, once you give them a good drink of warm water and then put them someplace really warm. And I've got all the instructions in the resources on how to do that on the, on the uh, course. And, you know, that's what I wanted to stop and talk about. I have another, we have a lot of questions, um, but I want to tell everybody. So Val's course, you can find it at the gardenersworkshop.com. Y'all, it's the best 50 bucks you will ever, ever <laughs> spend. And the course was designed and made for the classic home gardener. But let me just tell you, flower farmers, you can take what you learn in this course and make containers to sell. She also teaches you how to present it as a gift and how to package it. Um, so Val, I'm gonna list what I think and remember from the course and then you fill in any blank. So she takes you from um, the size bulbs, her favorite varieties, how to plant the containers, completely hands-on video of her doing it, how to take care of them, how to bring them back to bloom the next year, and then how to also um, present them as a gift, which, you know, me people, I'm always got the business line going. That's all about how flower farmers can take this and move it to make it something to sell during the fall and winter. What did I forget? What did I miss, Val? No, you got, you got it. Um, oh, good. One thing I would say is I also talk about with amaryllis, because I get bulbs from the Southern Hemisphere and also oh, from yes. Holland. And that's, they're, 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 they're the same kind of amaryllis, but one of them is much easier to force for the holidays. And that's the ones from the Southern Hemisphere. That still confuses me. I mean, it's like I need a chart on the wall. How many, Suzanne, anyway. So y'all, <laughs> it is the best 50 bucks. And if you don't know about our courses, when you buy one of our online courses, it is yours forever. It's just like buying a book. But instead of picking up the book, you just go to any internet service, log into your online library, and there Val will be waiting for you to have the course all over again. <laughs> um, and there's great resources. And Val, I think for flower farmers, you didn't you even include a commercial resource list? Yes. Y'all, this yes. is like the best thing ever. And I see lots of people commenting um, that they've taken the course and how much they loved it. And we appreciate that. And the thing you can do most to help Val and us is to go to that course and leave a review. And that's what people, yeah. I mean, what do we all look at on, on, the, on the big A is the reviews of yeah. products and how many there are. So um, if you guys would review your courses, that would help us so much. All right, so we have another question, Val. What potting medium do you use? Just regular potting mix? Um, yes, you use regular potting mix. Um, if you're a home gardener, get the kind that's better, that says for containers. And you could just go and get a bag of that at your garden center, at your big box store, whatever, but you can use that. If you're a commercial grower, um, I use ProMix, and actually, um, home gardeners can do it too because that ProMix is comes in big bales. I mean, it looks like almost like a straw bale. It's about that size. You can pick it up probably at your local nursery, um, not the big box stores. They won't have it, but it's called ProMix. If you get a big bale of that, it's probably going to cost you forty bucks, which isn't really that much, and you can keep it in the garage and use it for all of your containers like you can use it next summer for everything that you're going to put outside so it's very very handy to keep around all right so here's another one this is another really common question how about lighting for indoor bulbs is is it dependent on the plant or is there a standardized rule for indoor lights 
So you don't use lights, right? You just position your bulbs where they're in bright light. I think that's what they're basically asking is how do they provide light to indoor bulbs? Yeah. Um, the, uh, if you can provide them with overhead lighting, like say on your, if you have an island that's probably got lighting above it, perfect. Because it's re they're really going to like that. Because if the only light they have is a window that's over across the room, they're going to lean to that light. But if that's the case, all you do is just um, rotate the pot about a quarter turn, a half turn every day so that they will right themselves back up. So I actually, when I start amaryllis, I like to put them under shop lights. All right. So here's um, a good one. I ordered paper white bulbs and have already received them, but don't want to start them until November. How do I store them until then? You want to keep them in a paper bag someplace that is dark because if they have any light, they're going to start, they're going to want to grow. And then also keep them someplace cool, not your refrigerator, but the coolest spot that you have. Um, and that could be a basement. Uh, right. You could, but you're going to want to keep them cool. And I would actually consider starting them like in later in October and not right. hoping because they're going to start to sprout a little bit. And as long as the sprout isn't, you know, three or four inches long, you're going to be fine. All right. So I think you provide this in the course. Somebody's asking, where do you recommend buying big bulbs? Um, so I know that you have a list in your course, um, but is there just a general retail supplier of bulbs that you kind of include in your mix? I, um, my advice is, first of all, to get them from somebody whose livelihood depends on supplying you with great plant material. Yeah. So that's not going to be a big box store. Right. Because they're going to have little bitty bulbs and they probably <laughs> have them out now, but they are, you know, you really don't, you do not want those. So um, you can start, are you selling bulbs yet, Lisa? We'll get them in October. So okay. yeah, so we will have bulbs. Yep. Val sells bulbs. Do you ship? I do ship. Okay. Um, I do, and I ship uh, bulb gardens already. Right, well, I know that, because that's how what started all this, right, is I <laughs> bought a bulb garden from you. <laughs> yeah. So certainly we will have large bulbs, but here's the thing. You, people, I mean, the home gardener that's on here that's just looking for somewhere to buy a big bulb, I mean, it would be like, isn't, I don't, because I don't buy from retail online suppliers, where would you send a home gardener to buy the best supply of large, good quality bulbs? Online. I mean, somewhere like Brent and Becky's. I mean, yes. those are good friends of ours. They're within 30 minutes of us here. And Brent and Becky's bulbs would be somewhere I would recommend. I would absolutely recommend them. And you, they've got great bulbs. I've been there a couple of times. They are fabulous people. Um, I'd also recommend White Flower Farm. Yeah. They have a huge assortment of bulbs, and you can get them um, bulbs only. And they actually have them out right now. You can also go to um, uh, John Schieper's. It's oh, S C H E P E R S. Yeah. -E they have great bulbs as well. Right. Um, and then it's like Long. Is it Long Field or Long Wood? Long. Uh, I'm not sure. Long. So yeah, and so those would all be good retail resources. And sorry, folks, if you want the commercial resources, you got to get Val's course. Um, we'll give you lots. We give you a ton of stuff free, but we do hold back on some things. Oh, it's Longfield. Jesse Longfield. chimed in for us. Longfield Gardens. Yes. Yeah. Um, and so Val and I have had our amaryllis bulbs to sell on order for like six months. I mean, we buy them right back in the winter almost. Yeah. Um, because they are hard to find. Anyway, let's look at a couple more questions. How do you get them to stand straight up? And so they don't, they're not references if it's paper whites or amarella. So I can't tell you which it is. Yeah. With, um, I'm going to say putting the light 
over them is going to make all the difference in the world. And paper whites can take it pretty chilly. And so once you pot them up and follow my advice, you could even put them outside on your porch and they start growing there because then they're going to get sunlight and they're going to really right. that. Amaryllis like to be warm. They don't want to be 40 degrees. They want to be 70 degrees. And so to get them to stand up straight, again, the light over them, and if they start leaning, just turn them around. Right. Um, and that's about the best advice. There's, I also give a tip with for shorter paper whites uh, in the course that you oh, will end up with cocktails? paper whites. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Vodka. Yeah. Yeah, we we provide the cocktail with our bulbs when we sell them to people. And I've used that on amaryllis, too, by the way, with great success. That's um, good to know, because yeah. I've never done that. People ask me all the time. Yeah, um, and so, yeah, we did, because we were just questioned so much about how to make them shorter. We just decided to do it. So, you know what, Val? I just actually realized I never really formally introduced you. We kind of, your your camera was kind of crooked, so you kind of fussed with it, and I went off on a tangent. So, folks... This is um, Val, it's Three Toads Farm is the name of your farm. Mm -hmm. And what I say that you guys are known for is just your spectacular bulb flowers. Beyond this, the regular flowers that we all grow, y'all grow lilies that are incredible and amaryllis. And what else? Um, so tell us how you kind of, what y'all's thought is on that whole bulb thing that y'all do. Well, we started out growing uh um, the fragrant oriental lilies that Lisa mentioned. And that's where it all started. The bigger the bulb, the bigger the show. I mean, we sell our cut flowers for seven to nine dollars a stem at the farmer's market. So that's, uh, and the reason we can get that is because great big bulbs produce great big flowers. You'll get stronger stems, more flowers. We also uh, grow peonies. Yeah. Lots of peonies. And then, you know, we're, I'm especially cut flower grower. And so uh, I like to sell to florists and designers. Uh, this year we got those great Japanese lisianthus that were the first time in the U.S. market. And they were fabulous. Uh, we grow pollenless sunflowers. We, but I'll tell you what, the holiday, the amaryllis and paper whites are now more than half of, of my business. Yeah. It's gotten huge. And, you know, it's so funny. We, we bought a lot, um, but I know that we should have bought a lot more, particularly going into this another winter of lockdown, basically. Right. And um, so, friends, we are coming to the end of our time. So I want to remind everybody you can find there's a direct link to Val's course in my profile here on Instagram. You can just hit my name above. Go right to follow that link and get right to her course. Or you can always find her course and all of our other courses um, that are there on thegardenersworkshop.com. And, you know, here's, you know, kind of a special little bonus that just occurred to me. You know, when you, when you buy any course from the Gardeners Workshop, you become a member of our family. And when you're a member of our family, that means when you ever – purchase a school course that is one of our five big courses that are the six week courses um, you always get fifty dollars off so if you're planning on taking one of our courses and you're not one of our students yet if you buy val's course for 50 bucks guess what you get that 50 bucks off your school course so that just occurred to me. That was like, you know, because I know people think this way. We hear from them all the time. <laughs> so we love a bargain. So I would just encourage you. This is, um, it's just an amazing course that is a great opportunity for flower farmers that are looking for fall, something to sell at fall markets or even Christmas markets. And I'm afraid that if you haven't ordered bulbs yet, you may not be able to get the best sizes but friends smaller is better than nothing and you yeah. can actually put more yeah. in a container right. one of the things that val shares in her course y'all that is just over the top is putting multiple amaryllis in these containers that put on these shows i bought one of her containers for my mother-in-law last winter 
And I can tell you, she and my father-in-law sat at the bar and stared at that thing for 10 hours a day. <laughs> I mean, it was so beautiful. And so it's a great opportunity. And Val teaches you in the course, too, how to bring them back the next year, which when you have big bulbs, it's a lot easier. Yep. So, friends, we're going to be over on Clubhouse in one hour. Um, find us over there. It'll be, you can search Lisa Mason Ziegler on Clubhouse and you don't have to have an invitation anymore to join. You just download the app, join Clubhouse and come on over to our club um, at one o'clock for the Flower Farmer Show. And Val and I will be chatting again and taking more questions. So if we didn't answer your question, you have another chance, friends. So <laughs> this will be posted to Instagram TV for you to be able to watch it again. Val, thank you so much. And I will see you again after lunch. Thank you, Lisa. You're Thanks, welcome. everybody. Ciao. Bye-bye.